Welcome back to our podcast on Solid Ground. My name is Joe Boyle, and I'm the social media specialist here at Helicon. And I'm joined by our president, Jay Silver, as well as our guest, Brian Oglesby from the BBB. So Brian, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, so I work for the Better Business Bureau here in West Florida. Uh, we're one of over 100 offices of Better Business Bureau. Uh, BBB covers, the brand covers all of North America. Uh, we have five physical offices in the state of Florida and over 100 offices throughout North America serving consumers and businesses. Oh, very nice, very nice. So for the viewers who don't know, what does the BBB stand for and what purpose does it serve? So the history and, and how the BBB began, when you go back over 100 years ago, mm -hmm. it started as what was called the Vigilance Committee. Uh, back in the 1900s, you had the old snake oil salesman and bad advertising going on. And actually the president of Coca-Cola, Samuel Dobbs, was in a courtroom sitting with uh, one of his customers fighting a case. And the attorney said, well, everyone believes in some kind of form of exaggerated advertising. And he realized then that companies should be honest and ethical in the way they advertise to their consumers. And he created this vigilance committee, a group of business owners who got together and set standards on the ways companies should advertise. And that turned into what we see today, which is the Better Business Bureau, whose heart and soul is regulating advertising, but also handling dispute resolution and many other programs, as well as our BBB accreditation program. Very nice. And can you explain its rating system in more detail? Yeah, so the ratings on companies is actually a thing that all companies can receive. We rate companies between an A plus and an F rating. Mm -hmm. And the rating is simply our degree of confidence and how responsive that company would be to a consumer should they have a complaint with that business. So the rating looks at, uh, it's over 32 factors. We look at how long the company's been in business, do they have licensing or not? And so if we know they don't have licensing and we verify it, it drives their rating down. So these factors will drive rating up or down. Most of the rating, about 80% of it is complaints. If a company has complaints, are they responsive to those complaints? And do they have a pattern of volume of complaints? We also look at how big is the company, how much business they do, and is there a large volume of complaints to that volume of business? And so these are all factors that look at the rating formula. And based on all that data that's put in the company's profile, it would output a rating of that business. Hmm. So we report this rating on all businesses, whether they're BBB accredited or not. That's a service we provide to the community so all consumers can come to us check on that potential business that they want to do business with and get a good, neutral, informed information. Is this a company that I want to do business with or not do business with based on that rating? Interesting. Yeah, that's very interesting. I didn't know it was so uh, granular, the, yeah. the rating system. I just knew Helicon's been a A-plus uh, member since inception, but uh, definitely interesting to know all the different uh, parameters and 80% goes on to the, uh, the complaints and how mm -hmm. those are resolved and... Um, yeah, I wasn't uh, aware of how detailed the, yeah, right. the actual exactly. analysis was to, to get the, the rating. So. Yeah, and what's great <clears throat> about that is companies like Helicon that have proved themselves through the rating and have earned that A-plus rating, then BBB reaches out to companies like that, and we invite them to apply and become part of our BBB accreditation program. I like mm -hmm. to compare BBB accreditation to like when you go to school mm -hmm. and you graduate college. Everyone nowadays is graduating college. You graduate 4.0. That's the standard in the industry. All businesses should be doing good business, earning that positive rating with BBB. It's companies like you that go above and beyond, actually make a commitment to higher standards, our BBB accreditation standards, which are standards above and beyond that rating uh, formula that I talked about, uh, building trust, mm -hmm. being responsive to your customers, safeguarding privacy, embodying integrity. These are some mm -hmm. of the standards of accreditation mm -hmm. And those are the companies who go above and beyond and are accredited with the Better Business Bureau, like yourself. Yeah. Okay. And mm -hmm. I guess that leads me into my next question. What's the difference between being accredited versus not accredited? Are there certain like benefits to being accredited versus not? Yeah. So in the consumer's perspective, accreditation versus non-accredited is when consumers choose an accredited business, they know they're choosing a company that has made a commitment to those standards that I spoke okay. about earlier. So one of those standards is the company pre-commits to be responsive to a customer should a complaint arise. Okay. All the other companies who may have good quality ratings, A-plus ratings, um, they have those ratings because of responsiveness, but there's no commitment there. 
So we don't know the outcome should you have a problem. Mm -hmm. Most companies, most good companies will be responsive to their customers, um, but what's that track record look like? And is that company have other tools in place and do they meet those other standards of accreditation? Okay. For businesses who become accredited by the Better Business Bureau, uh, the benefits is the biggest benefit is the brand recognition. Consumers like to see that seal of approval. They look for that BBB accredited business seal. So accredited companies will advertise, they'll market it, they'll identify themselves as an accredited business. Mm -hmm. Consumers are more likely to choose them because of that. Yeah. Uh, we have many other benefits like our request to quote program. So our accredited companies specifically get leads from consumers that come to us. They say, we want a company we can trust in this industry. And then we put them through a platform where they we send out uh, their request to our accredited businesses and our accredited businesses get the opportunity to engage and connect with that customer as well. Hmm, very interesting. Uh, what should a consumer look for when searching for a business to use on the BBB and why does this make sense to do, you think? Yeah, so when a consumer is doing the research, right, there's a sea of information out there. There's lots of companies that consumers can choose from. Mm -hmm. And consumers are overwhelmed with this information. There's a lot of platforms out there. Uh, so a consumer really wants to look at what's called a company's track record. Okay. First of all, just because a company has a complaint or has a couple of negative reviews does not make the company a bad company. What a consumer should look for is how responsive is the company to that situation. When something does go wrong with a consumer and a company, how does that company address those problems? And that's where the consumer, when they go to BBB.org, they can read those complaints. They can read the company response. Even on reviews, they can see how the company responds to the reviews. Okay. And the consumer can make that informed decision. Wow, this is a company that really is responsive to their customers. They address their needs when problems go wrong. This is a company that I wanna cho choose to do business with. When you have a company that you don't see that scenario, if something does go wrong, it leaves that question, how does this company address those issues? So it's important to do due diligence, do some research on any company you choose and make an informed decision as a consumer. Right. And what are your thoughts on this, Jay? Like what should a consumer look for when searching for foundation re repair companies like us? Um, well, well, backing up on the, the complaints uh, real fast. I know Brian's been, he shared with me with the BBB for 25 years and uh, started out in the the complaints area, so he has a lot of uh, experience in in the complaints uh, arena. Um, the, the the accreditation, um, backing up a, a, one more step yeah. further, <laughs> um, that's a commitment by the business. Should an issue arise, that we are going to be diligent about addressing that and communicating and resolving that with the customer. Did yes, I hear that exactly. that correctly? So it's a a commitment by us and then a further maybe some vetting uh, to get that accreditation by the BBB. Um, yeah, so just to clarify that, as an accredited, accredited business, you're making a pre-commitment. Should you have a complaint, so, that in. you're going to at least be responsive to that customer, address the concerns mm -hmm. that they have, and then actually a benefit of an accredited business is we take it a step further. If there's still not a meeting of the minds, we provide mm -hmm. on the front end what's called conciliation. And then we go through mediation and even arbitration. And this is all a free service through that program yeah. to both consumer and business, where we sit down, we bring both parties together. Last thing you want to do is go to court with your customer and, and fight oh, over yeah. a situation. Yeah. It's always a lose-lose situation, right? Yeah. So if you can come together mm -hmm. through mediation, which BBB is the mediator, mm -hmm. our goal is to find a win-win situation be between the consumer and the business. And the end result is when the consumer walks away, even though they probably didn't get everything they wanted, they walk away as a happy consumer and they're happy with yeah. the situation. Sure. And that's a yeah. service that we do provide. And kind of on, on Helicon's perspective on the, the complaints, it's a great uh, resolution, a great thing to have. Um, we want to make sure it never ever gets to that that yeah. point to where mm -hmm. it gets mm -hmm. to a, a complaint. And as Brian mentioned, when you're looking into a cus uh, selecting a contractor, you definitely want to look at their BBB, their rating, some of their, uh, you do now reviews as well reviews on there as well, well. five-star reviews mm -hmm. um, and their their complaints. What's the volume of them? How are they resolving them? Are they resolving them? Um, I believe it's uh, at a satisfaction, satisfaction of the customer, mm -hmm. satisfactory. Mm -hmm. um, but on the, the Helicon side um, and our track record, and I you know, out of transparency, um, mm -hmm. the reviews do or the complaints, they do stay on your uh, BBB record for up to three, three years, years, I mm -hmm. believe. And, um, you know, most construction projects, most complaints, most issues arise from a breakdown of, of communication mm -hmm. a lot of times. Um, so on Helicon's mm -hmm. end, we now have uh, 
exceptional people that address any customer complaint that happens. It's diligently addressed. We, we work with the customer hand in hand for a resolution because we don't want the case where we come to a standstill and then it gets over to the, the BBB side. And, yeah. and out, out of transparency and you know, speaking on Helicon's behalf, I can't say that we've never had a BBB complaint. We did have one over probably 10 years ago. And out of, tr out of again, transparency um, of, of us and, and having one, it was due to just a breakdown in communication mm -hmm. uh, in our process. And the customer was uh, left in the dark for maybe too long of time and she got frustrated. Mm -hmm. So then when a customer gets frustrated, that's where the BBB comes in as a great resource uh, to be a member and accredited uh, or deal with an accredited business. If you can't resolve it with the contractor, you have that third party to step in, be an additional source if the communication breaks down Usually they're reaching out to the contractor. They're diligently working to resolve this. And that's our end goal at the satisfaction of the customer. But on, mm -hmm. you know, our, our end, we try to, you know, you can see on our BBB, we have zero uh, complaints in the last three years. Our goal is to, to never let it get to that point. But if it does, consumers and, and uh, customers know the BBB is a great resource to have and also to go to, as Brian mentioned, before you even, uh, when you're vetting, um, you know, two or three uh, or however many contractors you're considering, if it's one, uh, go to their BBB, see what their rating is. How many five stars are they accredited? Mm -hmm. Are they A plus? Do they have a huge volume of, of, of complaints? If they did have a few, how did they resolve them? Were they very diligent and working with the BBB and working with their customer and, and resolving that? Um, and if they, they show that, then they're probably a, a, a reputable uh, company to deal with. I know bit of a, a, a long ended uh, <laughs> yeah, no, answer, but, uh, you know, I'd say what consumers, yeah, they should look for is, is go to their, their BBB one uh, source there. Uh, you are also paired with the, uh, the Department of Professional Regulation, the DP, uh, DBPR. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have a, a relation with, uh, with them to uh, recommend to check their contractor's license. Mm -hmm. Um, insurances is another one to to get their their insurance policy yep. Yep. to make sure they have that. And then outside the BBB, is there any other resources that you'd recommend, Brian? On my end, I I go to Google Reviews as another um, resource. And um, you know, I I would like if if um, if you do recommend Google to also educate our our audience on. You know, what's the difference between a BBB review maybe versus a Google review? Because mm -hmm. in my my perspective, I think it it uh, has a high lo higher level of scrutiny of the quality of the review. It has to be a, a verified customer, whereas Google could be just, uh, you know, they're aware of Helicon is a great company in the community. We necessarily haven't done a project yet with them, but they can give us a, um, a review on there versus I think there are some differences between mm -hmm. the different review platforms and the yeah, the, um, <clears throat> there are. And, you know, the Federal Trade Commission actually did a study on reviews and actually touted BBB's review program as one of the best because of the vetting that mm -hmm. we do. Yeah. Now, of course, That's Google has the volume. You know, Google yeah. has a lot of content information. Uh, BBB, it's just what we do. We have a finger on the pulse. We have live, you know, we have 100 local offices in the community, mm -hmm. boots on the ground compared to these for profits that are corporate. They're doing mass volume. Uh, so BBB puts that personal touch to the data that comes into our database, yep. whether it be information on businesses, complaints that come in, and uh, reviews. And mm -hmm. the concept of reviews and the reason why we started them is because we wanted to hear from the happy customers and the positive reviews for good companies like yourself that is doing good work. You do a great job at handling your customers. You don't have the complaints. So now what about your happy customers? We need a platform for them mm -hmm. to praise your company. Yeah, right. And so you guys have those five-star reviews through BBB. And what sets us apart is when those reviews come in, so you have it on both ends. You have uh, fake customer reviews giving positive reviews. So you do have, unfortunately, mm -hmm. companies out there that pay companies, pay yeah. marketing companies or do it themselves. They create fake profiles and they submit positive five-star reviews to make themselves look good. Then you have sometimes competitors or disgruntled employees or whatever giving negative reviews on companies that are really not a true depiction of the consumer interaction of the business and the consumer. So BBB vets the reviews when they come in. When a review comes into the Better Business Bureau, it doesn't go live the minute it comes in like it does on other platforms out there. It comes into us. 
We have upfront processes like IP address tracking. Uh, we ask the consumer to provide their name, address, and email. They, they get a confirmation email they have to uh, reply to and confirm it's them. And then the next step that we do is we send it to the business and we give them the opportunity to look at it, respond to it, or address it and say, this is not my customer. You need to look into this further. And then we would go back to that customer and say, prove that you're a customer of this business. And it goes to these protocols first before it goes live to the platform. And so this is good on both ends. Sometimes we have bad actors, businesses that are not the best businesses out there, flooding our review system with positive reviews mm -hmm. that are not mm -hmm. real. And again, we see that through IP address tracking. We see a, a bunch of them yeah. come in, same IP, so we can cut those off at the, at the hip. Uh, and then, of course, the, the fake reviews coming in, trying to make a company mm -hmm. look bad. So we have these protocols in place. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are many platforms out there. BBB should not be the only platform consumers use to check on a company, make informed decision. It should be one of, mm -hmm. and it should be a place they come to. Um, Google is always a great place to start, but just understand the platform you're on and understand that you have to read more than just one or two. You have to look mm -hmm. at some history, see trends, and and make a decision. Is this, is this real information or is, or is it not? BBB, our office struggles with uh, the challenge on reviews in Google. A lot of people go to our Google profile page, BBB of West Florida, and gives us a one-star review, but it's not about us. It's about other companies they think that they're uh, giving a negative review on that company through BBB. They don't realize they're actually giving BBB a one-star review. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's okay, very yeah. challenging. We have, we deal with that every day mm -hmm. to remove those reviews from Google Platform because it's hard to connect and have that conversation and resolve that issue. So we just address it. We answer, this is not, you're giving a review on BBB, not on this company. Please go to this company's Google mm -hmm. profile and post the review there. So with companies local in this community, if you have a challenging review with BBB or, or a situation, BBB is here in your community. We're right here in Clearwater, Florida. We serve all of West Florida. You can pick up the phone. You can contact your BBB. We're going to have that conversation. We're going to get, 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 going to, get to the bottom of what's going on there. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I didn't know that much. Uh, I'm glad that uh, level of uh, analysis or checking goes into the, the reviews. It makes for a much qu uh, higher quality and uh, reliability of this, this, the source. Yeah, and the trends um, that we're seeing with reviews, which is a good thing, mm -hmm, is most yeah. reviews coming into BBB are happy consumers providing mm -hmm. positive infor information, yeah. and that's what we want to see. Uh, and just to tap on reviews mm -hmm. a little, generally speaking, when consumers have a problem, a dispute, and they want it resolved, they're going to go through our dispute resolution or complaint process. So the consumer cannot post both a negative review on mm -hmm. a company and also file a complaint. They have to choose one or the other. They can't do like a double mm -hmm. whammy on the company. Yeah. And so again, we have those parameters in place uh, to make it fair information for all parties involved. Great to hear. And how you mentioned about volume, that, that uh, yeah, we have a lot more, more Google reviews, us as a company, a lot more Google yeah, reviews, but a smaller volume of uh, BBB exactly. reviews, um, yeah. as well as Home Advisor and some other platforms as well. Yeah, exactly. So I'm flipping the script a little bit, but how long do complaints stay on the contractor's BBB record, you'd say? Yeah, so both reviews, complaints uh, are three years. So we have what's okay. called a three-year reporting period. Uh, so the profile that a consumer sees is uh, based on information on that company within the last three years. Okay. Um, oh, so reviews after, as well. Reviews I didn't, as well. I did yeah. not know reviews that. Reviews did not okay. stay on there forever. Huh. Uh, uh, they filter out over three years. Hmm. Uh, the whole concept is it's a snapshot mm -hmm. of three years of that company and and, and their history of doing business in those last three years. Uh, and then, you know, then it goes from there and it shifts on a daily basis. That's why, you know, a rating on a company could potentially fluctuate. Um, a rating today could change tomorrow based on complaint closures. Uh, if we have a file in a company and we verify that he does not have a license when we didn't know that on the front end. So again, there's things that drive a rating up or down government action we look at. Uh, if a contractor is known to have government action with the state, and it's, it's there and it's identified, we put that in his file, that would drive the rating down. Uh, so again, there's all those factors in the rating, um, but that information is based on the last three years. Okay, and how does this complaint resolution process exactly work, you'd say? Yeah, so uh, very simply, uh, most people we encourage to file a complaint online at bbb.org. They simply click on file a complaint, they tell their story, mm -hmm. and they identify the resolution they want sought. Okay. Once that complaint comes in, we forward it to that company. Whether they're accredited or not, we're gonna handle that complaint between the consumer and the company. 
We're going to ask the company to respond to the complaint within 14 business days. Okay. And that's the conciliation. It'll go back and forth through basically email and contacts. Now, for our accredited businesses, we have conversations with them. Again, they have that commitment, so there's going to be more involved in that process. Um, most companies, we find about an 80% resolution rate on all companies. Most companies are responsive to their complaints. As a matter of fact, you read consumer stories. They had a problem with a company that couldn't get it resolved. The minute they filed with BBB, they got answers and resolution. Our brand and who we are, companies are more likely to be responsive to. Uh, once the complaint is closed and final, finalized, that's when it goes live to that business's profile. Okay. And then other consumers can read that history of what the consumer's complaint was, what the business response was, and any back and forth dialogue there was. And then the, re the, the outcome of the complaint was a close satisfactory. And again, this is a key for the bad actors out there, the, the contractors that are not responsive to their customers. If they're not answering those complaints, if they have mm -hmm. patterns, mm -hmm. if they you know, just mm -hmm. don't even bother, and it's that closed, history's not, there, not they're gonna have a lower rating, maybe closed. an F rating. So that future consumers that look that's looking for a foundation repair company, they check out one of your competitors that's a bad actor in the community. They see he has an F rating, they were getting mm -hmm. ready to sign a contract. They say, oh, I'm not gonna sign a contract with you. You're not responsive to your customers. They're gonna go to BBB, right. go to our request of quote, look for a list of accredited foundation repair companies they mm -hmm. can trust. We connect them with you, and now you've earned their business because they they want to choose someone else. Okay. And can a complaint ever be ever be removed, or is what's that? Absolutely what? not. No. Okay. And we're very strong okay. on that. Um, a three, consumer three cannot years, even. three year time. Once a complaint time. once a complaint is filed and finalized and posted, mm -hmm. uh, it cannot be removed. Okay. Companies can't even mm -hmm. encourage customers. We've had we have where companies, especially bad actors, will reach out to a consumer and say. If you remove the complaint from the BBB, we'll resolve this issue mm -hmm. for you. So that's the reason why we do not remove complaints because it, it it taints the integrity of uh, BBB's data and our information. Uh, so when a consumer files a legitimate formal complaint, as long as it's legitimate and the process takes place mm -hmm. and the complaint is closed and it gets in the hopper, mm -hmm. uh, then we would not remove a complaint unless there's a policy that would allow us to move it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the complaint... Um so it stays on there, definitely no no removing it. So uh, in closing, it's either satisfactory or unsatisfactory are the two outcomes, so, the final outcomes of a complaint? Kind of. So the, there, there's, um, there's resolved, there's company address the issues, um, and then there's also unresolved. So if a company doesn't even answer a complaint at all, it will be closed as unresolved or unanswered. So it's unresolved. I'm trying to think of publicly. Uh -huh. So we have internal closures, but then the way it goes out to the public and reads, uh, it would be um, unanswered, unresolved, resolved, and I believe assume resolved. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, where the company answered, maybe the mm -hmm. consumer didn't re reply that they were happy, so we would assume it to be resolved. So there's like four or five different closure codes and how the complaints are closed. Mm -hmm. For companies like you, if you ever had a complaint, you would address it. It would be closed as resolved. The customer resolved. accepted oh, the resolution. So. It's a totally resolved complaint, and that's how it would show for companies that are responsive to complaints. Oh, okay, and that's what you want to see if there are complaints that they're being resolved. Is is there any threshold of what there? Where is there too much, even if you are resolving them, or is it um, what's kind of your perspective on that? Yeah, so I mean, if if you're a contractor doing ten jobs a year and you have nine complaints, that's probably a high volume compared to the amount mm -hmm. of business you get, yeah. right? But yeah. if you're doing uh, two thousand jobs a year and you have nine complaints. Yeah, That's a better. So we look at yeah. that ratio and we collect that data on volume of business and uh, okay. annual sales uh, and things like that. And we put uh, companies in tiers. So are they a small business, medium, large business? Uh, okay. So again, our ratings formula is a calculation that looks at this data and provides uh, the output based on the information mm -hmm. in, in the mm -hmm. database. So nine complaints on a business that's doing 10 jobs would affect their rating differently than a company that's doing 2,000 2, jobs, you know, potentially, yeah. yeah. And then, but that's not the okay. only thing that affects it. So again, mm -hmm. if those nine complaints, the company doesn't even bother, mm -hmm. bother to respond to the BBB, they're unanswered. The worst thing a company can do is not respond to BBB. Uh, that okay. has a high, uh, yeah. a high uh, yeah. number that's going to drive the rating down. So those companies yeah, would have to have F ratings. They're, yeah. they're not responding to their customer and they're not responding <laughs> to BBB. Because yeah. so. yep. again, the yeah. rating is <laughs> just our degree of confidence and how responsive the company is to their customers. Uh, okay? I see. Accreditation is above and beyond. It's the standards that companies like you mm -hmm. commit to 
above and beyond responsiveness to consumers, you know, making sure your licensings are in place, making sure you safeguard your customer's privacy and body integrity, you know, that list of standards that we send you in that plaque. Mm -hmm. So um, those are the differences between the two. Okay. And why is checking the DBPR for licensing and insurance not enough? So when you check licensing with the DBP, the Department of Business and Professional Regulations or any licensing agency, there's the ones who regulate contractors, uh, but any agency, uh, that just identifies that the company is legal to do business in the state. They have the proper licensings that are required to do what they do in, in the state, right? Mm -hmm. And you want to check that. You always want to choose a licensed professional. Um, but it doesn't show the company's track record and how they handle their customers and, and how responsive they are to their customers. Okay, the licensing doesn't mean they have good customer service. It just means they have the skills and ability to do the work for your home. So that's why it's good to go above and beyond that and check with BBB, check with all those resources and look at that track record of the company. The other thing that we do is we do that homework for the consumer when it comes to accredited businesses like you. One of the standards of accreditation is you have to have all the proper licensing. Oh. And we do all mm -hmm. that homework for the consumer. We oh, check okay. your licensing, mm -hmm. we recheck it every year. We make sure you have up-to-date workers' comp liability, you're registered in the counties you're required to be registered in. And you have to pass that test when you apply mm -hmm. for accreditation and every year thereafter to keep and maintain your accreditation status with the BBB. So when the consumer sees an accredited business like yourself, they know they're hiring that licensed professional they can trust. Mm -hmm. And we've done all that homework for them. So they don't have to go there and yeah. do that extra yeah. homework. Do all the legwork for them. Yeah, exactly. And then how can a high or low BBB rating impact your company? How can a low BBB rating? High or low. Higher or low? Yeah, okay. higher or low. Uh, well, it, it pretty much speaks for itself. You know, yeah. who, who wants to do business with an A-plus rated company and who doesn't want to do business with an F-rated? I mean, if you check on a company and they're F-rated, that's gonna create a question mark in the consumer's head. They're gonna think twice about choosing that company. And when they see that the company is A plus rated and accredited especially, mm -hmm. the consumers are more likely to choose that company and do business with them. Okay. And then as one final question, what has been your favorite part about working for the BBB? My favorite part is helping both consumers and businesses. Um, you know, when companies especially apply for BBB accreditation, uh, first of all, we turn down about over 100 applications a year of companies that apply that could have a, a good rating with us, but they apply for accreditation. They don't meet the standards. Oh, wow. They're unaware of how intense our standards are, but we're able to work with them and educate them and explain to them, hey, you just have to do this and this to meet our standards and you can still earn accreditation. Having conversations with businesses, helping educate them, helping making them better businesses. And then on the consumer aspect, having those conversations with consumers uh, helping them and steer their money to reputable businesses they can trust like yourself and steering them away from the bad actors in the community. Uh, unfortunately, there's some out there and we just want to help consumers make that informed decision. And that's a great part of the work that we do at BBB. Great. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know about you, Joe, but this has been very educational. Yeah, very. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Very informative yeah. and educational. Yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. good to learn about your company yeah. and meet you face to face. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and it's always yeah. good to connect with our accredited mm -hmm. businesses and you know, we appreciate the support that you guys and and honored and committed to our mission and our standards. And uh, without our accredited businesses, we're not able to do the work that we do. Uh, BBB is out there trying to educate both consumers and businesses, provide those services. And we appreciate your commitment yeah. to the standards that help us do that. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, our pleasure. We, uh, yeah. we very much appreciate the, uh, the relationship. Yeah, thank you guys. Yeah, yeah. thank you. <laughs> Well, thanks so much, everybody, for watching. Make sure to like and comment on this video and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content. We also want to thank Brian for joining us today. We really appreciate it for him to take time out of his busy schedule. And we will see you on the next one. Take care.